Halloween, as Jimmy would say. Um, happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you're having lots of fun today, or dressed up, and you're out trick-or-treating later on, or maybe you've just come back in from trick-or-treating. Um, as part of all the fun activities for today, I thought I might read you a story from Twintastic, because there's a Halloween-themed one, um, one of the four stories in Callie and Jimmy, um, Trick or Treat Twins. Um, it's got, I've got all the fantastic illustrations by Katie Keir up here on the screen for you too. So I hope you enjoy our Halloween fun. Let's go. What's the best day of the year? Jimmy asked me one morning over breakfast. He's always asking random questions like that. That's easy. Our birthday, of course, I said. Not including our birthday, though, he said. All right, then, it's obviously Christmas, I said. No, apart from Christmas as well. What are you on about, Jimmy? Say Halloween, he said eagerly. Well, yeah, Halloween is cool, I agreed. And Halloween was coming up. The supermarket already had a whole aisle dedicated to it. Costumes, face paints, decorations, giant tubs of sweets. I'm going to be a werewolf, said Jimmy. You're always a werewolf, I said. I know, that's why I'm going to be it again, he said. Jimmy suits being a werewolf. He has this wolf hood with crazy sticky up hair and the costume comes with furry gloves and feet as well. They all still fit. Over the years, he just wears bigger black trousers and tops to go with it. He loves getting into that costume. Gives him an excuse to be wild without anyone telling him off because that's how werewolves are meant to be. So he can go howling through the streets until bedtime if he wants to, which is, of course, what he always does when it's Halloween. What are you going to be this year, Cows? He asked. I think I might be a Day of the Dead Senorita, I said. A what? The Day of the Dead is the festival they do in Mexico to remember friends and family who have died. They dress up sort of like fancy skeletons with flowers and stylish clothes. Like the men have top hats and the girls have veils and frilly Spanish skirts. Trust you to do something clever. Well, they've got the outfits in Superco anyway. Yaya came to the table with a plate of halloumi on toast and sat down to join us for breakfast. You'll take us trick-or-treating again, won't you, Yaya? said Jimmy. Our street's great for trick-or-treating. Loads of houses put pumpkins in the windows so we can get sweets from them. We go to nearly every house there is. All except for number 13. Some say the number 13 is unlucky, don't they? Well, this house looks as if it's had all the bad luck in the world. Number 13 is creepy, like it's Halloween all year round. The garden's overgrown, the gate's all rusty, the paint's peeling off the walls, the windows are rotten, and the old lady who lives inside looks like she might really be a witch. She's as thin as a stick. Her hair is long, wispy and grey, and her face is all sunken and caved in. She hardly ever comes out. She just appears at the window, staring into the street, watching. It's Halloween already, said Yaya. Well, technically not till next month, I explained, but Jimmy's planning it from now. Trick-or-treating is a big deal to Jimmy, especially as he's not usually allowed that many sweets because they make him too lively. That's the polite words the grown-ups use for hyper. But when it's trick-or-treat time, there's so much candy everywhere, Jimmy manages to get away with having more than usual. I'm in charge of holding our buckets for collecting all the goodies. It's in the shape of a giant pumpkin. We're not meant to eat too much as we're going round houses. We have to hand our stash over to mum when we get back home and she shares the treats out bit by bit over time. I think she secretly eats half of them herself. So you're coming trick or treating with us then, yeah, yeah? Said Jimmy again. 
Yes, yes, I come, said Yaya, squishing Jimmy's cheek. Yaya's too cute. She even wears a mask at Halloween to join in with it properly. It's Jimmy's, one of those scream ones, white with big hollow black eyes and a long open mouth, like in that famous painting and the emojis. We usually, well, we always tell her she doesn't have to dress up, but she mostly wears black anyway, and the mask seems to go with it quite well. Yeah, yeah's pretty small, so she looks like she's enough for one of the kids anyway. A few weeks later, when it finally got to the actual day of Halloween, Jimmy was beside himself with excitement. After school, we got straight into our costumes, ready for trick-or-treating. Jimmy was being extra annoying because he couldn't wait to go out. Why do we have to wait until dark, he said, hopping up and down at the window. Because that's when spooky stuff goes on, isn't it? When have you ever seen a horror movie that happens in broad daylight? When have you ever seen a horror movie ever, anyway? You're such a wimp, you can't even watch Goosebumps without hiding behind a pillow. But before it could turn into a full-blown argument, Yaya poked her head round the living room door wearing her scream mask and said, boo, and we all cracked up. What they do next is they play some Halloween games around the house to pass the time until it does get dark and then they can go out. Yaya shares all her Greek spooky superstitions with them, which are a bit funny. You can read about those later in the book. All that mucking around with weird Greek superstitions did make the time fly though, and soon it was dark enough to go out trick-or-treating. I grabbed the pumpkin bucket for collecting our goodies and we set off to terrorise the neighbourhood. It had been raining all day, but luckily it had stopped by the evening. The roads and pavements glistened in the moonlight, which I thought added to the Halloween-y feeling. Yaya wasn't so keen on all the puddles though and kept j telling Jimmy to be more careful or his furry werewolf feet would get soaked. Jimmy, careful, as if. There were loads of other kids in the streets too. Everyone was squealing and shrieking and laughing and rushing about on a mission to stock up on sweets before the houses ran out. We bumped into quite a few people from our class along the way. Not my best friend Aisha though, which was a shame. Her mum and dad are not that into Halloween. Mitch Moran bombed past us with his Dracula cloak flapping behind him, almost knocking Yaya off her feet. Mitch Moran doesn't exactly have the best manners. We saw Candice Solomon too. She was dressed as a cat and was out with her brother who was being a zombie. Wow, cool costume, Callie. What have you come as? Candice asked. She was admiring my awesome makeup, I could tell. I'm a Day of the Dead senorita, I said. I was about to explain all about the festival in Mexico, but her brother was already off to the next house with Candice chasing after him, yelling, hey, wait for me. We went from house to house looking for the ones with pumpkins on their windowsills or doorsteps. Our neighbours were really generous and had plenty of treats to share with us. Jimmy managed to scoff more than he was meant to as we went round, of course, and he was becoming more and more wild, jumping and dancing about, howling his head off. Far too many artificial additives, Mum would have said. The people at number 15 would have agreed as they had very proudly made organic vegan monster cupcakes to share out that evening. They had actual pumpkin in them too. They look really good, but they're a bit disgusting. Yuck. Next door to them was number 13, with its rusty gate, overgrown garden and tumble down house. It looked extra gloomy in the dark, with rainwater dripping from its broken gutters. I went to walk straight past, but from a downstairs window came an unexpected glimmer of light. Look, cried Jimmy, the witch at number 13 has put a pumpkin in her window. Who is witch? asked Yaya. The old lady in number 13, said Jimmy. 
Everyone says she is. It's not kind to call people witch, Jimmy. It's just old lady, like your yaya, she said. Now that yaya put it like that, I did start to feel a bit guilty. But everyone says, said Jimmy weakly. I had the old lady put a pumpkin in her window. In all the times he'd been trick-or-treating, she'd never done that before. So, you knock on door? It's trick-or-treat, said Yaya. No way, said Jimmy, and he ran howling down the street looking for the next house that had a pumpkin, a more normal one. It was getting late now, and after we'd visited the last of the houses down our road, we turned back to go home. Give us a sweep, said Jimmy, trying to grab the pumpkin bucket from me. No more, I said, swiping it out of his way. You've had a million times more than you're allowed already. Jimmy started running around me in circles, trying to get at the bucket. Tell him, ya ya! I held the bucket high over my head. Jimmy jumped up at it, looking more like a crazy puppy than a werewolf. He jumped and he jumped, and every time he made a grab for it, I backed away. But he still wouldn't give up. Stop it, Jimmy, I said, but he didn't stop. He just kept jumping up and jumping up. And then he did the dumbest thing ever. He punched the bucket out of my hands. And all the sweets, the whole lot, went flying through the air. And guess where they landed? Right smack bang in the middle of a giant puddle by the side of the road and next to a drain as well. Look what you've done, I yelled. I only wanted another sweep, said Jimmy sheepishly. Well, now, one's no, now no one's getting any, are they? Why do you always have to ruin everything? I said, giving him a big hard shove. Yaya stepped in between us and said, all right, all right, it's enough now. But yeah, yeah, there's nothing left, I said, picking up the now completely empty pumpkin bucket from the pavement. Maybe we can knock on a few more doors, said Jimmy. We've already done all the houses. We can't go asking the neighbours for more. We'll look greedy. And anyway, everyone's probably run out of stuff by now, I said. Is one house we not go to yet, said Yaya. Number 13, must to maybe have some sweet? Me and Jimmy looked at each other. Dare you, I said. Dare you too, said Jimmy. All right, let's both do it together, I said. Slowly, in silence, we stepped back along the pavement towards House number 13. Yaya stopped at the gate. Come with us, Yaya, said Jimmy. No, it's for children, trick or treat. Yaya was right. That's what the grown ups did. They always waited on the street while the kids knocked on the doors. But this time, I wouldn't have minded her coming with us. I pushed open the rusty gate. It creaked on its hinges like they do in spooky stories. We made our way up the stony path. The weeds either side were taller than us and they brushed against our arms and legs, giving us the shivers. When we got to the door, my hand trembled as I went to press the bell. We stood and waited. Part of me still thought about turning back, but it was too late now. Then came the sound of footsteps shuffling towards us from behind the door. Then the rattling of the chain being undone from the inside. Eventually, the door opened ever so slowly. I forgot to breathe for a few seconds. And there she was, the old lady, thin as a stick, with her wispy hair and her big, Staring eyes. But you know what? 
the moment she saw us standing there on her doorstep, she gave us a smile. Her teeth were all crooked and her face was all wrinkly, but she actually looked pleased to see us. We just stood there in stunned silence. Aren't you meant to say trick or treat? The old lady said. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, trick or treat, said Jimmy. I held the pumpkin bucket out towards her. Oh, that looks a bit empty, doesn't it, dear? She said. We, we dropped it and lost all our sweets, said Jimmy. We, I said, giving him an angry glare. It was an accident, said Jimmy. He's always saying that, I said to the old lady. He has a lot of accidents. Ah, well, not to worry. Let's see what I've got for you. There's plenty here, she said, reaching for a giant tub of Terramix that she had on a table by the door. You're the first ones, you know. I'm not sure why. I put a pumpkin in my window this year because no one ever knocks on my door. Someone told me that's what people are meant to do. Is that right? Perhaps I didn't put it in the right place. Maybe it can't be easily seen from outside. A garden's such a mess. Anyway, I'm ever so pleased you came. Here, take as many as you like. Jimmy's eyes lit up and he went to grab a big handful. Not too many, Jimmy, I said. He's not allowed lots of sugar, you see. It makes him, well, it disagrees with him, I explained. Oh, well then. Let's see what else we might be able to rustle up for you, shall we? Oh, oh no, really, that's very kind, but you don't have to. But the old lady was already shuffling off back inside to see what else she could find. Me and Jimmy looked at each other again. She's actually really nice, wasn't she? I wondered if Jimmy was feeling as ashamed as I was. When she came back to the door, she was carrying a little plastic ghost. It had an LED light inside, which made it glow from red to pink to purple to green to blue. There now, she said, will this do? Wow, that's so cool. Thank you, Mrs. 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 Draper, she said. And then she must have noticed Yaya waiting for us back at the gate because she said, doesn't your little brother want to come and get a treat too? Oh no, that's our yaya, laughed Jimmy. Our granny, I explained. We call her yaya because she's Greek from Cyprus, except she lives with us now. We're at number 97. Oh, I see. Go and get her then. Don't leave her standing up there, said Mrs Draper. I went back to the gate and brought yaya over to say hello. Yaya took off her screen mask and shook Mrs Draper's hand. How very lovely to meet you, said Mrs Draper. Thank you for coming by with your delightful grandchildren. You're so lucky to have family. It's just me these days. Jimmy, delightful. Mrs Draper must have been really lonely. Even with my face paint on, I obviously looked a bit sad for Mrs Draper because she said, Oh, oh, you mustn't worry about me now, lovey. There's always a community centre for a bit of company. They do a smashing knitting and natter group as it happens. I really ought to try to go more often. Oh, you should see our yaya. She's always knitting. You should go to that yaya, I said. Knitting natter, said yaya. Oh, it's just an excuse to get out and have a cup of tea and a chat, really. It's every Tuesday at 11, explained Mrs Draper. Oh, yes, you sound good. We may be called together the next time, said Yaya. I'd like that very much, said Mrs Draper. Bye for now then, and happy Halloween, she said as we went off back down over her overgrown garden and out through the creaky, rusty gate. When we got home, Mum looked at our measly collection of sweets. You haven't eaten everything already, have you? Oh, no, we lost them all, said Jimmy. He held up his glow-in-the-dark ghost. But we got this! It's true, 
said Yaya. And Yaya got a new friend, I said. He's also true, said Yaya. This is Draper, I added. And she's not even really like a witch at all, said Jimmy. But actually, you can get good witches too, can't you? Maybe Mrs. Draper's one of them. Jimmy, stop calling her a witch now. She's just Mrs. Draper from number 13 and that's it, I said. But Jimmy carried on. There's a good witch in the Wizard of Oz, isn't there? And what about that one in Megan Mog? She's a nice witch, isn't she? Let's just keep these thoughts about who might or might not be a witch to ourselves from now on, good or otherwise, said Mum, shaking her head. You all seem to have had a very eventful Halloween. We'll leave it at that, shall we? Mum was right. At the end of it all, as I took off my face paint in the bathroom, I couldn't help thinking about backbones and evil eyes, pumpkins in lonely windows, and the number 13, which they say is unlucky for some, but not as it turned out for me and my twin, Jimmy. So that's our Halloween story, Trick or Treat Twins from Callie and Jimmy Twintastic. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have the best Halloween ever, just as Jimmy and Callie did. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. Hope to see you soon.